Listen up. I won't sugarcoat it. This is the longest cold flu and allergy season we've ever seen, but we're not alone. We've got Instacart. Sure, you may be a coughing snot faucet who just wants mommy, but you're not giving up. Not when cold medicine, fragrant herbal teas, and honey shaped like bears can be delivered through Instacart in as fast as 30 minutes. Now let's go win the sick playoffs. Daddy, I just want my soup. Oh, sorry, Sport App says it'll be here in, in a few minutes. <laughs> Instacart for the win. JamesAllen.com is the online destination to easily design a customized engagement ring and save up to 50% compared to traditional stores. You pick a diamond, whether it's lab created or earth created, James Allen has over 200,000 conflict free stones. Then you pick your ring setting and metal. And if you need some help, they have real time diamond consultations available where an expert can walk you through it all. Get 25% off your order at jamesallen.com code podcast. That's jamesallen.com code podcast. Welcome to the Power Cat Podcast, gopowercat.com's Kansas State Athletics Show. Make sure you're subscribing to our show at Apple, Spotify, Amazon, or wherever you get your podcasts. Now, from the GPC studios, here's your host, Go Power Cat publisher, Tim Fitzgerald. Hi, everyone. This is Go Power Cat publisher, Tim Fitzgerald, and welcome to, I want to say, a special edition of the Power Cat podcast, but this is exactly something we're going to attempt to do more of in the future. We will have one of our members of our recruiting staff sit down and talk with a recruit. And in this case, it's our own Ryan Wallace, who's been our recruiting editor on the football side for many, many years. And he pitches in on all things K-State when he can. But today, while he's focused on football recruiting, his expertise... And in the premiere edition of our new series, Past, Present, and Future. And in this episode, Wally catches up with the latest Kansas State football recruiting commitment, the fifth player in the class of 2024 recruiting, running back John Price out of the Blue Valley program there in the Kansas City area. At five foot eleven and 190 pounds, Price is considered the top running back in the class of 2024 in the Sunflower State and one of the better backs in the entire region. Wally has raved about him to me, and now let's get to his discussion with John Price. Welcome to the PowerCat Recruiting Podcast, Past, Present, and Future with John Price. Here's Ryan Wallace. Here on a special edition of the PowerCat Podcast, I'm Ryan Wallace, and pleased to be joined by Kansas State Commitment, John Price. How do you how do you like the ring of that? Sounds good, man. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Um it, it, the commitment was a, a long time coming, but also a little bit of a surprise to some of us. Um, I mean, were you surprised that you reached a decision so quickly? Not at all. I mean, it all boiled down to, and I'm pretty sure if I, if you could ask another player, they would probably say the same thing. But I would say it just came down to me being comfortable with where I'm at. So wherever you felt comfortable, why waste time? You know, that's where you need to be at. Sure. Plenty of time to get into the commitment, and we will. Um, but I also wanted to start on, uh, we're meeting today and you're fresh off track practice or track meet? Track practice. And give the, the fans a little idea of what you're running this spring and the things that you're doing in that sport. Uh, four by one, 100 race. Um, actually, I wish I would have been doing track these past uh, two years, but I'm doing it now. So uh, it's, it's helping me a lot. You know, uh, my fastest time in 100 been probably 11 six and four by one we actually probably got second that's the highest we got but we need a first place medal so, so you, you never done cra- uh, track until this season not at all until now did anybody or anything like push you to do it this year coach McNerlin, he out there right <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> he out there right now he, he 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 told me he was gonna get me to do track but it just went in one year not the other year during football season but he stuck to his word and he made sure I did track. So, And so for a guy that's running track and it's also a football player, especially a running back, it helps you with, you know, the coordination of running Definitely. and sprinting in general. Definitely. And also not just that, but endurance too. You know, the field only 100 yards, but the workouts we do make consist of like whole lap. So you just ran four football fields, basically. You keep doing that and just building up endurance, like I said. So, so – Let's go to um, your first football memory. I'm curious about that. What, what What's the first memory you have of either you watching football, picking up a football? 
Like, where I, were you? How old were you? I wouldn't say I was. I always was playing football. I, I didn't ever watch it. Like, just for example, like me and a few other kids in the neighborhood, we'd go toss the football around. It get too physical or something. You had to call it a day. Some parent come outside, call it a day. But just me in general, my first memory would be uh, with the Giants. A little program, uh, Coach Shen and I actually keep in touch with him a little bit. My little league coach for one of the teams I played for. I always played up, so I remember just a specific drill. It was we played. We called bull in the ring. You got one guy in the ring. Got about ten, ten guys around you. Mind you, I'm the youngest guy on the field. Probably it's ten big savages have circled around me. How what age? What do you think? I'm probably I'm third grade, so they're probably sixth grade. And I exaggerate you not. That's 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 probably I'm probably not even accurate on that. They probably was a little okay. older. But long story short, the drill is basically you keep your feet moving. Just turn in a circle and he calls out a number. You find that number. And if you don't, you're going to feel that number at least. So if you don't turn around fast enough, you're going to get hit. So you're basically just in the middle, protecting yourself, popping off. And just like little stuff like that, just to contact it. Y'all can you not like that. So I was going to say, did you, you remember yourself? Having more fun delivering the pain or was there some fear involved? Though? Getting it, receiving it, handing it out. Every part of it. Because once you get, if you get hit too hard, you you can't just lay down and let him. You got to go back now and hit him. So just basically, just come down with more of a dog. Where does that come from? Because so I'm gonna say, me myself, I I grew up, I was a wuss. You know, I, I <laughs> where does where does that come from? Because you still play that way. Yeah, it's man. That's the whole. That's how my whole life consists of man. Just fighting. You just don't give up. Your whole life just consists of running into an obstacle, breaking that, running into another obstacle, getting past that, just making it past all that stuff just to get to where you want to be, you know? And that's why I'm here today. And this is this is a commitment story, and yeah. we'll get there. Yes, sir. But there's also more to your story that I think fans don't know. And so yeah. for the fans that haven't dived into your background, if you go on – 24 7. If you go on on three rivals, wherever you want huddle, it's going to say John Price, Blue Valley High School, Stillwell, Kansas. Mm -hmm. You are not from Stillwell, Kansas. No, you no, go sorry. to Blue Valley, right? No, but there were some things that led you to Blue Valley. So, where where would you say your roots are? Where, do, where did Kansas you City, from? Missouri, right there in the middle of Kansas City, Missouri, definitely. Uh, specifically, if you want to be exact, from Specifically, 43rd area, the 39th Street area, but um, just you know, that's it's a it's a tough area. So with with that, um, it's easy to get sucked into it, like all the all the bad things you got going on down there. And when you're young, you will. It's just gonna happen. You are gonna still do some of that stuff, but it's up to you if you gonna learn from that and try to move on and become better from that mistake. You know, mm -hmm. and that's just what I'm trying to do. I asked about like your first football memory. Do you have a first memory of, you know, something, the first real thing that hit your life in a negative way? Man, What's the it was, a, I can't even give you a age when it first happened, but I can tell you it ain't stopped. And I honestly don't think it will stop soon. And that's just how, that's just life. So, but probably nine, or probably earlier than that. It's just, it's just how it is though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I'm all right. It's made me who I am now. There so. you go. There you go. You've got two necklaces there that I was going to ask about. Yeah. I didn't know if maybe any of those folks were no. from that area, family. Yeah, or definitely or... specific. This is this look. My grandma's house was on 39th Street. Mm -hmm. My dad was always at my grandma's house on 43rd Street. So I was with him. So I was always over there. So that's where that come from. But yeah, both of them passed away. Actually, all three of them passed away. My grandma, they stayed on 43rd. Pops passed away. And grandma, they stayed on 39th, passed away. But, you know, I still got, I can still go back whenever I want to, mm -hmm. to those areas, whatever, you know. Still, same type of, you still gonna get the same feeling as when they was there. I was gonna say, you still, they passed away, but you were old enough to have memories. Of oh, the time yeah. They Everybody, away. anybody in that area gonna tell you about any one of them three people I just told you about. Mm -hmm. Everybody. So, they ain't no strangers around here. So, when your when your dad passed, when your grandma passed away, were, were you old enough where you were looked upon to be 
you know, more of a man? <laughs> Did you I feel like about, you had to grow up actually, earlier? I, I, I've been, even before, even before they, they even, because they all passed away at different times, but even during that time, I feel like not just they definitely made me grow up in general, but just the environment I am already caused me to grow up fast. But that was just adding to it, which like, I mean, don't nobody want to go through that, but it, it happened. So now you gotta, it's time to grow up, like you said. Mm -hmm. And for me, that wasn't no problem, mm -hmm. especially with, I still got my mom and she wasn't, she, she, she my rock. She, she gonna make sure I'm straight, whatever go on. So whatever, as long as I got her, I'm cool. Any of these, you know, traumatic experiences that you've had to go through. Um, I'm trying to think of a, of a way to say this, but I mean, did you have to, did you have to see any of it? I saw a lot, but like I said, it's up to you if you're going, you can't just, you can't just sit on that stuff. You gotta, cause that's, you can't just sit on that stuff, long story short. You gotta, you gotta move on past that stuff and get to, get to something better, you know? I don't know what that better might be, but get to something better. So you end up, you and your mom somehow cross paths with Coach Lowe, right? Mm -hmm. um, and for folks that don't know, former uh, Lincoln College prep football coach, but obviously, you know, when you're at Lincoln prep, you gotta kind of comb the middle schools a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. And so he probably found you when you were in middle school and you end up exactly. going over to Lincoln College exactly. prep. Actually coming straight out of uh, Hogan, Hogan Middle School. There it is. Yep. Yep. Um, and what people might also might know is that I didn't. I actually didn't think I was gonna play football. I actually played basketball. But Coach Lowe always said he always said like, "Yeah, you a football player." So, but I ain't in one ear, not the other ear. Like I said earlier with that stuff. So, I just wanted to play basketball. But my mama was like, "You already, you know, if if you, it's the best opportunity you are gonna get in the city right now." So you be you be a fool not to take it. I ain't gonna. I definitely ain't gonna go against her words. So, so who was your favorite basketball player? Then, bro? Who did you think Kyrie Irving? Who did you think you could become? Kyrie Irving. Interesting man. He, I don't care what nobody say. You, if you can't pay me to name somebody that can guard him right now, <laughs> you no, know, it's Case, not happening. See now, that's a sensitive subject with K State fans because uh, the one year that he was at Duke, they played K State, and we'll just say it did not go K State's way. Yeah, that I mean, nice. It still don't go a lot of people away. So, so man, so it's a tough a, time stopping him. So are you a Jordan or are you a LeBron guy? Then? If you want me to be for real, LeBron is better, but Michael Jordan always not had a better legacy. So that's simple. That's the way. Okay. Well, the we question. agree to disagree on that one. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, let's get back to football. Then. So you're at Lincoln Prep. And interesting story that we realized the last time I talked with you is I was actually out of Lincoln Prep practice and it was your freshman year. It was going in, I think, to your freshman year. You just come off your freshman yep, year. Yep. And I was there in the summer. A loaded team at that time. Howard Brown was there. Toby was there that ended up at Auburn. You had uh, Jermaine that ended up at, at Arkansas. Yeah. Um, what was it like kind of coming up? Again, in that program at that time was the cream of the crop of the city. Just, just like I said, in the city, it's all dogs there. So younger dogs, you're going to get thrown into the fire with the older dogs. And if you can't last, that's where you get thrown on JV, just being that simple. And unfortunately, I was thrown on JV, but I wasn't. I didn't practice with JV. That's what everybody don't know. That's why I was always standing out on JV, though. I never practiced with JV. I always practiced with the older guys, though. And that's what... That's of course that helped me play. Mm -hmm. Now I was never scared of the competition, but that always that did help me get used to what I'm gonna be playing against. You know, so, so your sophomore season, you end up playing varsity, yeah. starting varsity, yes sir, and have a phenomenal year. Yes, sir. Um, things at that point were probably, I mean, that had to be like a high point of yeah. your career at that point. Yeah, it was, and I, life maybe in general. Yeah, man, I'm telling like, like the city. Man, they on my they they love me right now, but that's when it really started. Like when it was like people was really coming out to the like I couldn't even get through I couldn't even get to the locker room sometimes at, at halftime at the games. Everybody wants to shake my I gotta get in. I gotta see what coach wanted at halftime. It was yeah, that's like that's that's stuff that made me feel good back there. And so you're yeah. coming off that sophomore year and it was maybe this time last year, probably even before, you know, probably more closer to winter. And I started getting some text messages 
from some guys in the city that, that cover the football and hey, do you know that John Price is going to Blue Valley? And Blue Valley is my alma mater. This is where I went to school. And so, you know, I'm reaching out one, you know, should I know about John Price, <laughs> right? Because sometimes it, it doesn't always get to me. And uh, they were like, yeah, you should know about who John Price is. Right. But let, let's paint the picture, I guess, a little bit for fans. In a perfect world, you would never be here. In no. a perfect world, you would still be at Lincoln Prep yes, about sir. to come up on your senior year. Yeah. But some things happened. Yes, sir. Uh, unfortunately, uh, some things I was slipping up. Like I said, this one of the distractions, like you, like I said, and if you're going to choose to become better from that mistake that you make. But previously, like, Low was there, and he was helping me stay down. But as soon as he left, all everything just went to shams, kind of. Mm -hmm. So... Back, not focusing on the student part of the student part of student athlete. So was letting the grades in the classroom slip. Only reason I was really coming to school was just to play football. So it was just rough at that point in time. And unfortunately it led to me getting kicked out. Mm -hmm. Simple. And mm -hmm. the, due to the good bond I still had with Lowe, he was still able to help me find a better place. So was there ever a point at that that time that you thought maybe you just, or would you always play ball? Um, you know, I guess if you, if you're not at Lincoln Prep, did, was there ever a point that you felt like I might oh, not be able to oh, play yeah. ball? So, yeah, as soon as you know, I got the letter sent, I was gone and I was sitting, I was already at a bad point during that time. So when that happened, I was just like, yeah, man. So I might've just be another, another dude from the city that just messed up his shot, but, Man, just sitting there during that time, it really had me like, if I ever get a chance again, I ain't gonna never do it again. Mm -hmm. And soon enough, that phone rang, Coach Slope pulled some strings for me. I love that dude to death, man. I know, I was gonna say, I know the bond with Coach Lowe is very tight. Yeah. To the point where- That's some best family. There was, there was even a thought of maybe seeing if he could bring you with him to California. Yeah, definitely. To I, live in his house. I actually even went out there to take a visit. Mm -hmm tour the whole place, but like I said, home is home. So it was just that part of me saying I, I couldn't leave yet. It's a, it was like, if it was a different time now, it's like if I had to choose to go to college right now, I'm out of here, but I was still a little, like I can't leave right now. So Coach Lowe texts you or calls you or whatever. Yeah. And he says, I got a spot for you. It's at Blue Valley High School. You're probably, were you like, where the hell is Blue Valley High School? I, I, I told, I told Coach, whatever I need to do, just tell me where it's set. I'm I'm on the way out there now. You, when you ain't got no options and you get an option, why would you question the option? Mm -hmm. You you go check it out, ASAP. So your first memory, your induction, your introduction to Blue Valley High School is what? Sitting in the same exact spot we are at right now. Uh, actually sat down and talked with Terrell a little bit. Mm -hmm. Couldn't really actually couldn't get a feel for him at all, <laughs> but I was just like, maybe just another coach. I don't know. He might. I don't know. I didn't know what to think of him, but we got stuff rolling. And shortly on, I was like, all right, maybe he is a good dude. And mm -hmm. It ain't no maybe no more. He is a good dude. So. Mm -hmm. And so obviously, you know, you have to you find someone that takes you in here. Yeah. Uh, you're not traveling from, you know, your mom's house. To hear every day, uh, did you have your? You had to have had your guard up for a while. You oh, know, with honest, some, living with some strangers, right? And, honest, I'm not saying it like they creep me up or nothing, but just naturally, how I was raised, I always keep my guard up. But even like with them, they had tried to get me to bring it down, and like I might not like that, but I know that might be good. So I got to learn to open up just a little bit. I can't always just be walking around mute, trying to fill everybody out. I gotta, you know, so. It's, it's cool, whatever. So I got a real, actually, I stay with his name, Greg Power. Mm -hmm. That's my dude. He kind of corny, though. But yeah, that's, my, <laughs> that's my dude, man. What? You, it had to have been a little bit of a culture shock, though, right? I mean, again, I can say this because I went to the school. Not a lot of people that look at, like you, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and so you come here, you get to the football practice. Um, you know, it's it's a lot of guys that are used to going to like you know barn parties, or whatever, <laughs> you know, and it's a big weight training 
program. Yeah. They're big on their weight training here. How long did it take you to adjust to this kind of football? Man, like the play on the, the the adjustment on the field was was instant. It was the adjustment in the weight room and stuff that I had to get. A, and man, I I honestly didn't get a feel for it till about probably six seven months in. Man, that the program we got here is serious and it's it's, it's beneficial too. So um, once I got to rolling though, it was no problem. I'm I'm on it now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, it did take some time to adjust, but I'm good now. So. And when I met with you in February here, a couple months ago, a couple no, weeks ago, right? Um, I wrote about it in the article, and Coach Terrell said it during the interview about, you know, John wasn't himself last year. Yeah. Go a little bit more into depth of what fans might not understand, because they see a guy that ran for 1,000 yards, right? Yeah. guy that had almost 15 touchdowns. Yeah. Seems pretty on par from what you did at Lincoln Prep, but at the same time, you were able to do a lot of that stuff on just your raw talent. But it it wasn't you, right? No. It just playing like I like I. It ain't no surprise. I I play every game with anger. It's it's that's how it's supposed to be played, if you ask me. So at this point, at that point in time, it was just like anger about might not. It's anger about like more a lot of more stuff that I won't really dig into, but now like the anger was going to like a different point. So maybe the anger that I was having at a certain point in times might not have been good. Mm-hmm. And I didn't cut it off, but I couldn't because mm-hmm. it was already flowing. And once it's flowing, it ain't no stopping it really. But So you had the mental adjustment yeah. and the emotional adjustment of being, you know, out here at 150 pounds, and, right. you know, <laughs> And you know, living somewhere new, playing somewhere new, you'd lost how what were you down to playing weight wise? You I lost was weight. About 170 something. So yeah, people see your highlights and they think of you as this kind of scat back guy. Yeah. But in reality, you are much closer to what we see you now, which is a two hundred pound, <laughs> as Coach Carroll said, Isaiah Pacheco, right? Yes, sir. So really last year was was as much about getting your feet wet yeah as much as anything definitely Uh, anything that happened on the football field was like a cherry on top yes sir let's hit the pause right there and we'll return to ryan wallace's discussion with john price after this brief message this is the powercat recruiting podcast this is the powercat recruiting podcast past present and future with john price GoPowerCat.com's PowerCat podcast continues after this short break. Selling a little or a lot? (coughs) Shopify helps you do your thing, however you cha-ching. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. From the launch your online shop stage to the first real-life store stage, all the way to the did we just hit a million orders stage. Shopify is here to help you grow. Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell everywhere. From their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS system, wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify has got you covered. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout. 15% better on average compared to other other leading commerce platforms and sell more with less effort thanks to Shopify Magic, your AI-powered all-star. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. And Shopify is the global force behind Allbirds, Rothy's, and Brooklinen, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Plus, Shopify's award-winning 24-7 help is there to support your success every step of the way. Because businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash odyssey podcast all lowercase go to shopify.com slash odyssey podcast now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in shopify.com slash odyssey podcast welcome back to the power cat podcast now let's return to the gpc studios welcome back to the power cat recruiting podcast past, present, and future with John Price. And now let's return to our own Ryan Wallace as he talks to Kansas State's running back commitment for the class of 2024, John Price. Was there a point last year that you were worried about your recruitment too, or did you just know if I just keep playing my game, 
I know I can be. I I was I was I always had a thought that no no matter who it is, where it is, if you play how you keep playing, you're gonna get looked at. And whoever take that shot on you, whether it's Northwest Missouri State, whether it's Alabama, whether it's you see, whether it's anybody, if they're going to give you a shot, you're going to take that shot, like I said earlier. You're going to take that shot, and you're going to make the best out of that shot. That's simple. What was, who was the first coach that, that reached out to you? Maybe not even at Lincoln, but here at Blue Valley, what was the first staff that you remember going, okay, maybe this will be the first domino that falls? Um... Was it Iowa? Yes, it was Iowa, yes. I was just trying to make sure that I didn't have no interactions with coaches just in general before them. But no, it, it actually was I. We had the conversation right there. I was at a, I want to say it was a junior day or a game, some, or it might've just been a regular game day that I made it to. And Coach Betts ended up coming up to me and I, I didn't know nothing much about him, but he ended up just talking to me. I was just like, uh, love your film. Uh, I know a little bit about you, want to know more about you. Simple, just the usual stuff. But, like, I was still in tune with what he was saying. And he was just ended up saying, like, we want to be your first offer. And I kind of, I kind of like, looked at him and was just like, is he for real? Like, <laughs> yeah, is he for real? But is it, is it, like, a real offer? Like, can I post about it? But I, I didn't say that to him. But I'm just, like, thinking, like, is it real right now? It was just like, and after that moment, I was just like, I don't care if this was the only one or what. You, you did it. So. Just keep doing what you're doing, and this is where you're going to be at. But at the same time, you had to be really excited that you've got a Big Ten program that's ready to offer you, and you're playing it maybe, like we said, you're like 70% of yourself. Right, right, exactly. That's what I'm saying. I'm not going to – that's why I don't even like bragging too much. I like my game showing, but if you don't come to a game this next this next season, I'm about to have you. It would be crazy not to. That's all I'll say about that, but – so how about the first interaction you had with K State? Do you remember Jeez. that? Uh, actually, they they came to a game I did not know about, and I got injured at halftime at Northwest. Actually, we played here, and I got I got a little wrist injury from when I previously broke it, so I didn't want to take it too far. So I just ended up having to sit that game out. But while I was playing, I think I scored a touchdown, had a block to take a kick return, a bunch of plays. And then it was just like I, I was I was down on myself after that game because I'm like, man, here we go again with this wrist. I'm about to I'm already not at 100. This ain't finna do nothing but send me down even longer and have more eyes passing right through me. So, but I didn't even. That's why I, I'm a firm believer when they say somebody is always watching though, because hey, I didn't I didn't have no clue he was gonna be there. And the offer no came. Thought. Pretty probably the probably not too long. I won't say I don't want to say no time because I don't want to aim too close or not. After, but not too long after that, so that was that was good. That was huge for me. And I need to probably interject again for folks that haven't been following along with your recruitment. You mentioned that you got banged up in that game. Not only were you playing at seventy percent of yourself, but you only played about. Fifty percent of the season, maybe. Yeah. How many games do you, I can played, you count that you didn't finish? Or maybe four, it'd be easier, maybe it'd be easier if you do count four. ones you did finish. I I probably say I played a good six to six five six to five games, <laughs> and yeah, they don't know. They probably don't know about that. About yeah, I played probably half the season, which was like I said, that goes back to that anger part. Where sometimes I should have learned to turn down that anger just a little bit, but. Like I said, this this season I've been working on it, so we we be good. So the season ends, your your junior season ends, and it felt like maybe this winter is when everything kind of became easy again, yeah. and you were able to just live life. And it also seemed like that was when your recruitment started to really spike. Yeah, man, that was that was that was perfect, perfect time. Because I'm like, I'm I'm. My motivation was all my motivation was always my people, my family, and like how to, how they live. I they like I I just say this now they won't be living how they are right now in about the next five to seven years. But that's always been my motivation. Now is all right. What you gonna do to make sure you make it happen? Now you know 
Like you got the opportunity, but is you going is you going to capitalize off what you got in front of you now? Is you going to choke up and still be that that dude that they talk about had the same shot as you and and blew it off doing something crazy? So, yeah. was there a conversation that was had after the season or you know, something that sparked you in the winter where you, you know, somebody just said like, you know, it's now or never kind of thing, John, or, or did it just, it just happened with, with you internally? As far as like, um, me deciding to- like, you know, I could be down on myself from junior year. I could be down on myself and where I'm at, you know, in this uncomfortable situation. Not even. Cause like I said, I always had that, 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 that thought in the back of my head, like for, for real, for real, forget, forget you. Mm-hmm. You got a little sister. You got little brothers at home. They, they finna go through the same thing you just went through. And you, I be, I be, I, I will not sit and watch that happen. You know, mm-hmm. so that's 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 always what I got to think about. If it always come down to it and always get to that point, like, man, I ain't doing it. I can't do this. You are like, yeah, you can't do it, but yo, you, you remember who you're doing this for, though. Right. So, now you've got, and, and since then, obviously the Oklahoma State offer came in. Yeah. Um, I, who was it? I think Minnesota. Minnesota, yeah. Um, obviously Kansas, K State, um, several others. But give fans an idea too of so there's a multitude of other colleges that came through here yeah. or were trying to con- connect with you indirectly. Maybe didn't offer, but yeah. tell fans maybe bunch some of those other colleges. A bunch of other co- uh, Mizzou, OU, Nebraska, Iowa State. Uh, Baylor has some contact with them, and it's it's probably Kentucky. See, it's it's, it's it was it was a I bunch think Michigan more. Michigan might have come through. It was a point. a bunch more that I I probably can't even remember right now. But like I said, they didn't pull the trigger, and I'm not gonna knock they program or nothing like that. But honestly, they probably will. They gonna regret that soon. So <laughs> I'm just being honest. So and and. I mentioned when we talked in February, you sat in that seat and you were very honest. Yeah. And we asked you about the two local schools, KU and K-State. At yeah. that time, I think you were kind of planning to visit both. And at that time, you mentioned that you felt like, honestly, KU was showing you a little bit more interest. Right. What changed between the, this last week when you commit to the last time you and I talked when K-State was kind of playing number two? Yeah. But... This was the thing. Like I, uh, I was, I was on. I went to K State. I visited K State previously before that, before that time. But I was, like I mentioned before, I was with my boy Dre. That's there now. So I was like, kind of his guest, a little bit. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I knew what they had there. But now I wanted to. I wanted to. Now it was my turn to see like what they got for me now. Mm-hmm. So now, before I even get there, I go to KU. So. Basically, they just gotta. They just got to make the first impression, basically, and they made a, a good impression too. So, but once I got down to K State, and felt like I said, once you feel like you know where you need to be, it wasn't no more. This is where I'm at, and that's where I'm gonna stay. Well, walk us through that visit, the one that you just took to K State, yeah. um, and kind of the highlights that just really, you know, left a lasting impression. On you. Just, just it fit me, man. Like the. The way I, I want to practice, they don't. It ain't no slow practice. They go, they 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 popping pads. It ain't no slow. Just walking through. I mean, you need that, of course, to be technical and all that little footwork, walk through and stuff. But I don't. That's I feel like that's a boring practice. If I'm being honest, I want to go. We teammates or not, we we gonna pop these pads so we can we can be ready mm-hmm. when we time to go on Saturday. So. And I heard you also really connected with Coach Klein. Like, oh, yeah. More so than just like, yeah, he's cool. I want to play for him. I mean, there was like we, a, he yeah. struck it off. Yeah, we had a talk, and, and he probably don't even know this, but we had a talk in his office. He told me, when he told me that basically I don't have to commit right now, he don't even know in my head that I probably wanted, I was back, I was almost committed right there, then and there. But I was just like, he, he, like like I said, every school that I had in the top options, I felt like they was genuine with what they said. But he was just like, I right. like he I took said, it to another. He one. took it yeah, exactly. So when you feel like that's who you want to put your trust into, you put your trust into him. And obviously, Colin Klein, the offensive coordinator, has modernized their offense. You know, I mean, they're going to pass it around, um, but they're still. 
ground and pound too, which uh, probably is ideal for you, right? Yeah, actually, what I, I've been watching them uh, play a few games. I played, watched the TCU game, Oklahoma State game, and if you ask me, I feel like they really base their game off their running back. They don't even base off them. I feel like their game is built around their running back. Mm-hmm. Just that, it's that plain and simple. And then once you bite on that running back too much, that's when he gonna draw up something to hit you in the passing game. Were you able to talk to any players, maybe some running backs while you were there on the visit? Nope. Okay. Didn't, didn't really need. To, and I'm not saying it like that, but I mean they are they are in the in the position that I will be at, but their journey ain't gonna be the same as mine. We're gonna be at the practice every day. We go. We gonna we gonna be. We're going to be together, but your journey ain't going to be the same journey as mine. So while I'm looking into this school, I need to find what's go- with what I need to know. And when I get here, maybe then we can start connecting. But it's, as far as as far as that, I'm, I'm, I got to get myself together first. Do you have any other connections on that roster? Maybe not running backs, but any other guys from Kansas City? And, Andre, Andre, of course, but yeah. that's that's probably about it. I like I don't even know everybody on the roster, but I'm pretty sure it's, it's probably a couple guys I didn't played against in the low league teams. I'm sure probably up there, even if they was in Kansas. I like I and like this is what I'm, I might not know too. When I played little league football, I played for a team that was farther, like out of the Missouri area, which we traveled with Liberty. We was called the Liberty Eagles. Mm-hmm. It was Coach Gifford, and we was we was, yeah, we was the ones, man. <laughs> we was wiping out everybody from everywhere. I mean, to Arizona, Wichita, we was all over the place. But yeah, that's why I'm. That's why I'm pretty sure. I, I know it's a couple of them guys up there. I'm sure. So when did you come in? You mentioned that you wanted to do it at Clinton's office. You didn't. You end up. Did you come back here and then make a phone call? And- I committed. I committed actually on my grandfather's birthday, which was like it was. It was. It wasn't planned at all. But when I realized, I was like, "Dang, that's kind of crazy." I called him. I called him right before the call and told him happy birthday, and then I called them and. Made that call, so I was like, "That's kind of that's kind of cool." Who you know? answered the phone from K State? And- uh, it was it was climbing, it was climbing, but this is what I I didn't. I'm thinking I was talking straight to Coach Climbing. I he had to have the phone on speakerphone or something, because I don't know how they heard what I was saying. But long story short, I I ain't, I'm like I ain't, I'm not real talkative, and I'm I'm gonna get right to the point. So I was just like, Coach, I'm just ready to get to work. Simple, and then. I, it, it had to be no less than about four or five coaches in there. I heard about that's just that. a lot of yelling, like, yeah, whoa. I'm like, and then, like, that's another thing. Like, you get that feeling, like, yeah, you want it here. So, that just go, just re- like I said, it's ready to get to work now. Now, you're also, you mentioned you're not, you're not the most talkative guy, right? Yeah. Um, and you're, you're, a, a, but you're also a team player. So, I'm, that's where I'm curious. Do you, have you kind of put on the recruiting hat now, or are you very much the type of guy that's like, I'm gonna let other people figure out the K State's right for them. I'm not gonna be out there. Not even like, cause like I said, my journey ain't gonna be the same as that next person journey. So if you, I'm gonna tell you it's a good place, but if you don't find why it's a good place for you, then then don't come here. Find where it just don't fit best for you. Mm-hmm. But like I said, it is a good place. So. Come on down, but <laughs> if it ain't for you, it ain't for you, man. So you have? Are there any guys that you kind of targeted? Like eh, I might just slide them. Actually, I won't say no names, but y'all might not know they they offer my cousin there too, and I, the way he talking, he might he might make that move too. Okay. So okay, I tell, tell him stay in tune for that. Um, have you had a chance to kind of develop friendships or any sort of relationship through group chat with some of the other commits? Uh, yeah, we in a group chat, but like I said, I'm. Back, back to not being a real talkative person. Like, I ain't, I ain't started no conversation in there or nothing. But, like, if a conversation does come about, I'm going to pop in there and see what's going on in there just to build a bond. So. Okay. Um, and then back to where we are now. Where What's kind of your weight now and, and what kind of goals do you have set for this coming season? You've already kind of hinted this is going to be a different kind uh, of year. Yeah. This, I'm still bouncing in the 190 ranges. Honestly, that's what I, I would rather be playing at about 190 just to be toned but still have a little light even though that sound like a, a little light on my feet kind of so and just from now on just keeping out on the track is already helping me with my speed my strength gonna continue to get stronger just because of the program we got here and the amazing people we got running it so that's 
just staying down to like to this season come around. Couple quick hitters to finish this interview off. Um, you're a big Kansas City guy, right? Yes, sir. Uh, we see the Chiefs hoodie, um, or I see it. Folks yeah. can't see it. Yeah. Um, you got a favorite Chief? And let's say you can't say Mahomes or Kelsey. Pacheco, come on. Okay. okay. And that's like the coach, coach, coach. Compare me to him, like, and I'm not, I'm not knocking it or nothing, but like, I don't like being compared to nobody, but. I would say that that is a cool person to compare to because, like, like I said, I feel like game should be played with anger, and that's how you run. But you're also you told me you kind of Blake Corum, Bijan. Yeah, like, bro, I was watching back the other day, and I'm not gonna lie, Bijan might might have had Saquon college career wise. Ooh. I'm maybe it's not me not yeah. Matter of fact, I take that back. Okay, yeah. now that I'm thinking about it, that sound crazy coming out of my mouth. So, but yeah, Bijan just had, he, that was a crazy career. He just put up, man. I just watched it again. I'm like, bro, him and Saquon, they just, man, they made college football look like high school football again. So. Okay, Kansas City guy, what's the what's the go-to barbecue spot? Uh, Just probably, probably Gates for mm-hmm. sure. I'm not a, I don't go to the Jack Stack, none of that. LC's Barbecue, a few people try that place, but. It's it's all right, but I'm I'm gonna go with Gates if you ask me myself. Okay. And then what's what kind of hobbies do you like outside of lifting, outside of football? I mean, you gotta do something. Me, um, if we've been completely honest, if I'm not doing football and I'm not working on myself, I want it. I'm chilling with my family, with my peoples, with my closest partners, and we stand out the way, stand humble until we can get to where we want to be. What are you doing? What are you doing? Li- what, do you listen to music? Li- watch movies? I could call my mom right now. She tell you we just sitting in the house bored. She probably got to tell us. Like why are y'all here? Go do something. <laughs> like why are y'all just sitting here? We don't we don't need it. we ain't we like how like in my mindset, like how can you and this might not be like everybody, this might not be like the you might not understand this from what I say, but like how can you go out and enjoy enjoy like all this other stuff and you ain't even you can't even you ain't even stable, you know? So my whole thing, I can, I'm not enjoying. I'm not doing none of that until I feel like I'm stable enough to to even do that. Mm-hmm. And my, I got a few partners like they, they, they understand that, but they still be, they still be doing young, 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 crazy stuff. Man. You're saying, hey, look at me. Yeah, and I'm gonna be. Oh, okay. That's what I'm saying. I gotta be the one to get, keep them from doing the crazy stuff. We gonna. As soon as we all we need is all they need is a new change change of scenery. That's it. There you go. That's all they need a new change of scenery, and I'm gonna I'm gonna put it in place for them. Okay. And last but not least, since it's hoop season, you are a hoops guy. Mm-hmm. You you follow Coach Tang and, and the guys during their their run through the bracket. I mean that run they just had. How can you not watch it? But honestly, I ain't never been a, a real like college basketball guy really. Mm-hmm. And actually, my uh one of my one of my cousins kind of went to uh, K State and played basketball. Amai Wainwright. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. That little stuff happened. No, he probably tell you there's some knucklehead stuff, but yeah, he was he was he, he, he was tough. I didn't man. know that there was that connection. He had a few. Okay. Things. You could get a bucket. So when yeah. You to. And with the big brother, you've got an NBA connection too. Yep. 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 So are you a lavender guy then? Do you like the lavender? I'm getting into it now. You're getting into it. Now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's a good way to finish it then. Um, a new lavender love for John Price. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, man, for being part of this this K State podcast on GoPowerCat.com. And why don't we just let you finish it out by just kind of giving uh, one last note about yourself to the K State fans and, and something that you know just let them know how excited I guess you are to be a Wildcat. Really excited, man. It might not sound like it because, like I said, I'm not real talkative, but my 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 player do enough talking for me, so just to be ready for you. Thank you for listening to the Power Cat Podcast. Make sure you're subscribing to our show at Apple, Spotify, Amazon, or wherever you get your podcasts. Power Cat Podcast. All rights reserved. GoPowerCat.com. With Blue Link Plus, you can access your Hyundai Tucson Limited remotely. Doors unlocked. Temperature set. Lost car found. There it is. Get complimentary class leading Blue Link Plus. Call 562 314 4603 for complete details. 
CBS Sunday, February 11th, after Super Bowl 58. You collect rewards, right? This is how I make my living. It's the debut. Everyone's looking for something. Of a new hero. You strong swimmer? So-so. So-so. So-so's okay. Justin Hartley stars. I survive. You make quick, smart decisions. You never let panic take the wheel. Sounds cool. It is cool, actually. Very cool. Tracker, part of CBS Premier Week, Sunday, February 11th, after Super Bowl 58 on CBS and streaming on Paramount+.